Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's highly informative and crucial webinar on the topic, Learning to Survive in a World of Cyber Frauds. I'm Chandan Singh from C3I Hub, IIT Kanpur, your host for this session. Cyber frauds have become an ever-present threat in our increasingly digital world, and it is essential to equip ourselves with the knowledge and tools to protect our online presence. Today, we have an expert speaker who will guide us through this complex landscape. But before we introduce our distinguished speaker, let me take a moment to acknowledge his extensive expertise in this field. Professor Triveni Singh wears many hats. He is an IPS and is currently posted as SP Cyber Crimes. Uttar Pradesh Police. He has done his PhD in financial cybercrime management from MIT University, Uttar Pradesh, and is a certified ethical hacker and computer forensic investigator. He has served in different government development departments, inclu including jail, rural development, and has worked in different capacities in vigilance, economic offenses, anti corruption, and district law enforcement wings of police. He is a resource person to many organizations such as CBI, NPA, ICI, NCRB, State Judicial Academics, etc. And is a regular keynote speaker at various national and international conferences. He has been honored with President Medal for Gallantry by the President of India. <clears throat> Excuse me. Certif uh, Certificate of Honor by Director CBI winner, India Cyber Corp of the Year Award. 2012 by DSI NASCOM Commendation Disc by DGP Uttar Pradesh Law Enforcement Award by Visa Security Summit Seoul, South Korea, Gold Commendation Disc awarded by DGP Uttar Pradesh, Digital Forensic Investigating Officer Excellence Award by International Association of Scientists and Researchers. He has authored many case studies in national and international journals and is often quoted on cybercrime issues by several media houses. He is a co-author of book of the book Hidden Files, which is based on real cases of cybercrimes investigation and runs an audio uh, radio show on Red FM to spread cyber safety awareness. He has solved several complex cybercrime cases in which about 600 cyber criminals and over uh, rupees 4,000 crore of fraudulent money was involved. We are truly privileged to have him here with us today. Now, please join me in extending a warm welcome to our moderator, Professor Sandeep Shukla, sir, who is currently Rajiv and Ritu Batra, Chair Professor and Past, uh, past Head of Sci uh, Computer Science and Engineering Department, IIT Kanpur. He is currently the Joint Director at IIT Kanpur. Now, without further delay, let's begin our webinar on the topic, Learning to Survive in a World of Cyber Frauds. We encourage active participation throughout the webinar. Please use the chat feature to ask questions or share your thoughts. We'll do our best to address as many questions as possible during the Q&A session. Ladies and gentlemen, let's embark on this journey to learn how to survive in a world of cyber frauds. Over to you, Sandeep, sir. Thank you, Chandan. And we are extremely grateful uh, that uh, Professor Tribhani Singh who is one of the busiest uh, uh, police uh, uh, in the in the state uh, solving uh, cyber crimes on a daily basis uh, has given us time for out of his busy schedule for uh, for the for discussing uh, you know the cyber crime incidents and uh, modus operandi of the uh, cyber criminals in uh, today's world and uh, uh, some stories about how he uh, has uh, uh, solved some of these cyber crimes and then also what to do and what we shouldn't do uh, in order for uh, protecting ourselves um, from uh, uh, falling victim to cyber frauds. And also, if we do uh, fall um, uh, victim, then what we should do. So I will request uh, uh, Professor Tribhani Singh uh, to actually start, uh, uh, you know, and uh, give us uh, some idea about how cyber frauds happen today in India. And then, uh, you know, we can go into the other queries uh, uh, regarding uh, what to do and what not to do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Sandeep Shuklaji. And uh, thank you, Chandan. 
So I will start from uh, what kind of cyber crime is happening in cyber space, you know. So first, let me explain the technology and tools, how the cyber criminals are committing the crime. Now, let me uh, explain it that everything can be spoofed. I mean, your mobile number can be spoofed. Anyone can call anyone from your number because that will be a spoof number. Technology is there. You can easily download it from the internet. Anyone can spoof your mail ID. I mean, anyone can send mail from anyone to anyone. And from naked eye, you know, without doing any deep forensic, you cannot understand where, whether this number is a spoof number, whether this mail ID is a spoof mail ID, or the genuine one. You know, you cannot differentiate without doing deeper analysis of the header and all that. That's a technical thing, you know. I don't want to emphasize much more. But it should be very much clear to you that your number can be spoofed, your identity can be spoofed, somebody can create your uh, identity on social media network, be it Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or any, you know, they can create your replica, your digital twin on the so if somebody who knows you, he goes on to the uh, social media platform, he thinks that he is Mr. Trivani Singh, C. Chandan, is Professor Deep Sukla. No. The fact is that the criminals have pasted their photograph. They have created a clone in Europe uh, on the social media platform. So believing that he is a genuine guy, you start interacting with them. So thousands of people deceived they were you know, cheated just because they were going to trust in his screen. So what is his screen trust? Whatever is coming on the Google, Google says. What is there on the computer? We believe that this is true. The fact is that anyone can manipulate anything. You know, Data can be manipulated. Your photograph can be morphed. Your synthetic video can be created. Your synthetic image, your synthetic photograph, mark photograph can be created by superimposing a photo of some, you know, malicious link. You know, so this, this uh, it's a bit scary that anyone can do any damn thing by using tools and technology which are free, freely available. If you want to hire the services of criminal, you can hire it. Just go on the dark web and you can hire the services of cyber criminals. I want to defame, I want to defame, uh, particularly I am interested in some my senior or uh, some my relative or some my rivals, corporate rivals. I can hire the services. They can smartly execute, you know, they can start the smear campaign. They can assassinate your character. They can spoil your emails. Social media, they can make any video, audio, synthetic image, video, viral, you know, within fraction of a second. Because there is an organized racket who are into this kind of activities. Of course, if you are ready to pay, pay the money, then they can do any damn thing. So they can launch some ransomware attack on your computer system, on your corporate network, on government network. They can hack any data. They can disable any computer, your mobile phone. They can hack into your private photographs. They can make it viral. They can misuse your identity, your you know, personal pictures, your personal messages, your personal communication. They can intercept and they can do this. This is such a scary word. So now the criminals, what they are doing? They, 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 they make you... Uh, uh, you know, a friend on social media network, then he start chatting in a very, uh, you know, positive and very yeah, decent way. They start chatting thereafter, the missing element, okay, I'm missing you. And then all of a sudden, they say, I am in love with you. So I want to do a video call with you. The moment you receive the video call, what happens? At the other end, some completely naked girl is there. And then through a screen capture tool, they will capture the video. And then they will threaten you that if you are not paying the ransom, then we are going to upload it on, you know, on social media platform. On Twitter, on YouTube, we can make it viral. Otherwise, you pay the money. 
So thousands of victims, they came to me. They were into depression. It basically, they were under mental trauma. It, despite giving lots of money, the demands were unlimited, you know. First, they paid one lakh, then 10 lakh, then 50 lakh. Then, and, you know, n number of demands are there. Just the three ten you that we are going to publish it. So some, uh, I mean, if you are not agreeing, then a call will come from a police inspector, then from DSP, the, the, uh, and that will be basically a WhatsApp call or a, a spoof VOIP call. And your picture will be uh, a picture of a police officer, law enforcement officer will be there, they will be threatening you. So in in number of ways, they go on threatening you, they are, they, they go on extort, uh, extorting money. And that's that's why this is called sex extortion. It's very rampant, you know. At least 500, 600, 1,000 people, they are into this. Continuously, they are doing it. They are, there is a particular uh, triangle area uh, uh, which consists of few villages from Mathura and uh, most of the villages from, you know, Bharatpur and uh, Alwar and... Uh, they are basically Merati, Mewati, and they are into this sex torsion racket. Uh, there is a different racket. They are operating from Jamtara, Jamtara Girdi, and uh, the part of some uh, West Bengal. They are into you know OTP fraud and uh, all kinds of. They are they are expert in extracting some OTP through different different social engineering tricks. They will make a call to you that your ATM card is going to be blocked. So have you posted your, uh, have you uh, posted your merchandise on uh, OLX? We are interested in purchasing that furniture or then I am, uh, I'm a police officer or army officer. This is my bias. This is my rank. We are interested in purchasing. So I want to pay. And for test trial, you have, I want to pay you two rupees or hundred rupees. Let me check whether the money is going to you or not. Just to win your trust. The moment a trust factor is established between you and the cyber criminals, then all of a sudden they say that my WhatsApp uh, payment or the, uh, you know uh, this you know uh, Google pay, uh, pay is not working. So I am sending you a QR code. Just kindly scan it, and I will get you all your money. So what happens? The moment you scan the QR code, the money goes out. Just a simple. Uh, funda must be clear in your, in your mind that once you scan the QR code, it's always one way. It's always to give the money, not to receive the one. But 99% people, they are not clear about this, uh, you know, application. That scanning QR code means giving the money. And that's it. Thousands of people getting, you know, befooled on daily basis. In your trust, they really, they pay you 100 rupees. 200 and that comes into your account. Your account is recharged. You, you can look at the balance. Similarly, what is happening? All of a sudden, you know, you know how uh, a fake website can be created. And fake website, similar look and feel of, uh, you know, OLX or some eBay or Amazon. Just look and feel. Everything is, uh, uh, will be uh, there just like Amazon. And then there will be an advertisement that Apple phone is uh, you know, available on 70% discount, 50% discount. You don't, you don't read the actual URL on browser address, you know. Address bar, you never go on the actual address. So that will be Amazon, Amazon.in. Instead of Amazon.in, the, the URL will be Amazon.in. But the look and feel, the layout, the designing, the content, every everything will be similar to Amazon. So there is no doubt. You think that it's an Amazon website and the software is there on the Amazon. So since Amazon is such a huge brand, they have created such a trust fact, uh, factor uh, in the eyes of public. They start you know, paying the money, ordering the mobile phone. So what happened after a few minutes? After uh, after two, three, four days, if 100 people or 200 people have been uh, properly deceived, all of a sudden that URL goes out, you know. And your, 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 your mobile phones or any merchandise that that is not delivered to you, then after six, seven days, you go to the police 
and then finally when you we analyze it then we found it's a, it's a fake website case so a spoofing of the number anyone can make a call from anyone to anyone a spoofing sms is spoofing the website and he, and since the the listener are from the iit technically i want to tell you that you can spoof even my id of the computer you know they can change your IMEI. For example, suppose I have lost my mobile phone. So they are going to some, some you know, a vendor. They are changing your IMEI. I, now I can put in a SIM. Despite you know that this is your mobile phone, you cannot claim and the police cannot give it to you because the IMEI number is changed. The ID, identity of the mobile phone is IMEI only. And, and there are so many, you know, tool, flasher, tools that flash and immediately they imprint some 15 uh, number I mean. So I always uh, think that what to do? Everything can be cloned. Your debit card can be cloned easily and the tools to clone your debit card is available, freely available on the Amazon and eBay. So the skimming machine, 3,500, 7,000 rupees. Then card duplicator, there are a special variety of printer, you know, that comes 24,000, 20, uh, 2,000. I mean, if you are ready to spend 30,000 rupees, then you can start your own factory, card cloning factory inside your car, just by investing 30,000 rupees. So you are going, putting the schemer in the ATM slot of a uh, ATM booth, they can copy your data. They can install some pinhole camera over the you know uh, uh, the machine, or they can implant some key logger inside the you know keypad inside the key. So the key logger is capturing your pin, and that schema inside you know superimpose on the card slot that is capturing your magnetic data. What else they need? They don't need any other information, you know. So they immediately go to the, after half an hour, they compromise 100 people. They go to the car because they have all their apparatus, the cloning machine and this computer and all. Then superimposing that magnetic data over the blank card. You can, you can purchase blank card from the Amazon. And then immediately after 10, 15 minutes, you are going and withdrawing the money. Your debit card is in your pocket, but the criminals, they are withdrawing it in Mumbai because the criminals who compromise here in Lucknow, they are sending this data in real time to someone who is sitting in Mumbai. So they are they are capturing your uh, uh, you know pin, four digit pin, and data of the debit card. They are getting it imprinted on black uh, blank card, and it's as good as your debit card in your pocket. So what is happening? So they are very surprised. That, Sir, my card is in my pocket, and the money is being withdrawn in uh, you know Kerala and uh, Kolkata and uh, Mumbai. How it's happening because I know the technology, they can do it. So, what they are doing, the criminals so really smart, the PI Raspberry, you know, there are very unlimited uh, 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 equipment, you know, a computing device comes into networking device, rather say. They connect it to the ATM card machine, they give a command because they are technically very smart, and then all the money from the ATM card machine just went, it started running out. And your ATM machine is completely black, you know. So by using simple technology, by using TI Raspberry. So they did in Calcutta, in, in hundreds of, you know, ATM machine and all the money gone out. So the criminals are that is smart. Most of the criminals, they are very communicative. Their communication skill is good, number one. They know basic terms and jargon of banking are Joby social engineering tricks they know a little bit about the business process and the, all that. So when you put a counter question to them, since they know the business operations, say uh, they know how this system works, so they they clearly they, they reply and you think that yes, the money is from the bank because he knows a little bit about the bank. So just they, they start winning the trust and then I, I don't want your OTP. Don't give. Simply just you download this application from Google. We are not the cheater. We are not the criminal. We never ask any OTP. Never share OTP with anyone. So, you say, how good a person is this? 
कितना अच्छा आदमी है किस तरह की बात कर रहा है फैक्ट इज दैट ही हैज यू टू डाउनलोड अ सर्टेन एप्लीकेशन दैट इज रिमोट एक्सेस टूल एंड देन दे दे आस्किंग यू द पासवर्ड एंड देन इमीडिएटली ही इज कनेक्टेड रिमोटली फ्रॉम हिज मशीन टू योर मोबाइल फोन नाउ ही कैन रीड योर रोटिंग तो पहले उसने क्या कहा रहे नहीं नहीं हम बदमाश नहीं हम तो बैंक से बोल करें आप ओ टीपी तो आप किसी को बताइएगा मत तो आप कहें कितना अच्छा कितना अच्छा लड़का है ये एंड देर आफ्टर वॉट है हमारी फाइव थाउजेंड टेन थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन अरे पैसा जा रहा है अरे कुछ नहीं कुछ नहीं गलती हो गया गलती हो गया वी आर गोइंग टू ये आपका फिफ्टी थाउजेंड दिया वी आर गोइंग टू क्रेडिट इन योर अकाउंट डोंट वरी डोंट वरी ये कुछ गलत चीज जब जा रहा फिर आप देख रहे हैं अरे पच्चीस हजार और चला गया वन लाख टू लाख ऐसे जाता रहता है so you, this is the way the criminals are operating they know they exploit your emotion they know the indian people they are really very innocent they are gullible you can explain anything and they think it to be a genuine the genuine one so usi tarah aap all of sudden aap you will you think okay, kyunki every everyone whosoever is doing btech course or any course whatsoever he is going to enroll himself on some big nokri.com or you know job portal The moment you sign up on job portal, this your entire profile goes into the hands of cyber criminals. Immediately, you know, the next day you will be getting a call. This call is from the Nokri. dot com headquarter. Congratulations, you have been selected for this post because they are looking at your profile that you have done your uh, uh, graduation in uh, computer science, and they can they can look at your address that you are studying from IIT Kanpur. They think that the sir, would you would you prefer uh, would you prefer your location to be uh, Kanpur or Lucknow or uh, Noida? So and salary is this one five lakh. Are you ready? So willing? Okay, yes, we are willing. So they will send you a link. You just uh, this is the mail ID. You send you all the documents, credentials. So you are sending your documents. Then next day after two three days, a call will come to. Uh, we are talking from the legal department of the Nokri. dot com. So there is certain legal formalities we need to fulfill, complete. Because there will be legal verification, so you will have to incur ten thousand rupees or fifteen thousand rupees, not much. So you are thinking, "Ha, verification to chalta hoga. Ten thousand is not a big deal. It is a big, big offer for Nokri. So immediately you are sending ten thousand rupees. Then, ab ab ab. Now you are into trap. Once you have paid fifteen thousand rupees, then the next call, second day, third day, next. Uh, call you will get from Nokri dot com headquarter, and they will say, "This I am calling from the HR uh, department." Do you think that yes, in company HR is there. HR is very important. So now there will be telephonic interview. Uh, you will be there, sitting inside your hostel or college. Then uh, a, a few uh, guys from here, uh, from Nokri headquarter, and then the expert. So you will have to pay the fee for experts. आप सोचेंगे सही बात है देना पड़ेगा Yeah, just a minute. Yeah, professor. Uh, you have to uh, unmute. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. So you know, uh, this is the way cyber criminals are operating. For example, uh, if you have to book a flight. Uh, uh, Somewhere, so they have created n number of websites. So all of a sudden, you are not reading uh, the exact address of McMahon Tree for uh, for any uh, portal. So a minor difference between later McMahon Trips dot com or McMahon Trips dot in dot to org. And now this is the age of AI. By within within sixty second, you can create a beautiful 
just you have to uh, write in AI application like chat GPT. Uh, there are so many applications. So you, you can write that a website looking similar in layout content I make my trip or up my my trip comes building it on the so it's a beautiful website on your domain the, the AI can create so th now they have started this you know and there are huge discount Bonanja offer and all that and the people are being cheated on daily basis you know uh, they, they can spoof mail or senior executive political I know in crores of rupees they have lost 200 crore. I have dealt, uh, I don't want to disclose the name of the industries, but there was a case in which he lost 200 crore rupees because some call was from there to the junior finance wing that I am in Sweden and we are into uh, dealing with some Chinese company. It's a big, huge contract, you know, and immediately this much money you, ha you will have to transfer because they have used the defect technology to create, you know, the similar voice of the CEO, you know, everything, you know, they can fake it. That is called deep fake. So through deep fake, they called uh, uh, a finance wing. The CFO was called. Then he was asked to transfer the money. He transferred the money, and then ultimately, uh, it was found that it was fake call. It was a deep fake call, and two hundred crore rupees money. So what happened uh, in Lucknow six months back? Sandeep ji is well aware with the case. One hundred forty. 6 crore rupees transfer from a bank to cyber criminal account. 146 crore rupees. So immediately we intervened. We did all the forensic. Then we found that they had implanted some laptop along with the whitelisted IP. They had implanted their remote access tool on the laptop and the keylogger on the uh, branch manager, assistant branch manager. So it's, it's a very complicated offensive. You know, they, they have done. And they had transferred you know, 146 crore rupees. So you can think how easy to commit a crime in cyber space. Pilot to jate to pit jate, pakla jate. There are lots of threat, you know. Now sitting inside a five-star room, you know. hundred percent safe. You are using the VPN and the proxy technology just to hide your track and identity and committing crimes in crores rupees. So this technology that has made our life easier. So very much convenient to communicate. For example, I am not in IIT, but I am addressing the family members and the colleagues and faculty of IIT sitting here. Then there are negative sides. Then the, this is the dark side that technology somebody can hack into the system. And there is no way to find out whether it has been hacked or not. Somebody, whether I am being broadcasted anywhere else, I am not sure. Even you are not sure. This way we are communicating, you are sitting, but you cannot be sure right now that whether this entire my communication, my speech is being broadcasted or not, we cannot be sure. Right now we don't have this kind of technology. So this, you know, the complexity of technology, the jurisdictional issue, the legal complexity, you know, the conversion process, then this your financial labyrinth and all that, you know, it's, it's getting so hard to retrieve the one. Aapka paisa chala gaya? It's very difficult to because they are putting money from bank account to JP, a local cryptocurrency platform. And from there, they are sending it to the international cryptocurrency platform. From there to P2P wallets, by using Mixer technology, they are distributing those money to thousands of e private wallets. So what is what happens? No, no law enforcement agency can retrieve once it has gone into the P2P. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot establish the identity the KYC of the person where the Bitcoin is uh, going. Because, uh, and that's why, you know, Bitcoin has become the de facto currency of the criminals. It has be be become the fiat currency of the dark web. Because they know if I am taking money in Bitcoin, nobody can trace. So now the criminals who used to take money in rupees, now they are taking, demanding money in Bitcoin and all that. There are lots of variant of cryptocurrency they are demanding money over. So one question I still let me forget uh, before I forget it. Uh, Sandeep, uh, he, uh, he, he he asked me to to explain what will how to proceed in case I am cyber crime victim. So if you are a cyber crime victim, there may be two scenarios. Number one, your money has gone. In most of the cases, in seventy percent of the cases, your money has gone. 
then what do you need to do if you are sitting here in India and especially in UP, then you can dial 1930. Immediately dial 1930 because it's a real time platform where e-commerce portals, all banking industry, you know, all the retailers, you know, everyone is connected on the same platform. Payment bank, your bank, bank, foreign bank, is everything is they are they are uh, I mean connected in real time. So once you have lost the money, 30,000, for example, the money is going to ICC bank and from there to you know they are transferring it to PNB bank. So they are 24 by 7, the people are sitting just to look to look at the complaint which you are resisting through 1930. It's a very, it's a very brilliant, you know, uh, scheme by uh, Ministry of Home Affairs. So what will happen in this entire fraud supply chain somewhere into the banking industry, we get hold of, we get your money freeze somewhere. Because it doesn't happen that within fraction of a second, they, they cash out all the money from, because it takes some time. So if you are financially we fold, then what's your duty is immediately you just you just pick up your phone, dial 1930-1930-1930, and then immediately. What is important there is you have to tell them unique ID, you know, transaction ID, and then last four or six digit of your debit card, and then other personal details, whatever they are asking, six three, your name, your bank, where you put your money. So if you are putting all these information, so once now, uh, uh, now uh, after 1930, you, know, you immediately you look for a website, cybercrime.gov.in. Cybercrime.gov.in. Go and you just come register your complaint. Then they will they, they will be asking lots of more detail, you know. But you don't have to go outside of your home or campus. So always remember 1930 in case financial transaction. If somebody has marked your picture, somebody has spoofed your uh, you know mail, somebody hacked into your social media account, somebody is making some mark uh, photograph viral, then you can immediately go on cybercrime.gov.in, cybercrime.gov.in, you can raise a complaint, and there after you go to your police station. Okay, this is the complaint I have. Uh, loss. This is my acknowledgement number. Now you pursue it. You investigate it. So rest of the thing, rest of the investigation will be done by the local police station. So don't forget 1930 cybercrime.gov.in but it's not enough. Now you'll have to contact your local police station also. So this is the way, you know. And in most of the states, this is the way uh, the cybercrime complaint are being registered or being looked into. Uh, we have in Uttar Pradesh, we have 18 cybercrime police stations which are dedicated to look into the cybercrime cases. For example, if, I'm uh, if I will talk about the Kanpur, we have a dedicated cybercrime police station. So, in all the major cities, we have dedicated cybercrime police stations. If dedicated police system, station is not there, then you can approach cyber cell there. Cyber cell is there at the district level, and then you can go to your police station. The police system is bound to register your case. That is the legal position. So if any question, because let's make it interactive. You ask me a question, any question, technical, legal, administrative, procedural, modus operandi, you can ask any question I would like to answer. Yeah, so so there is some uh, uh, question already from uh, uh, Priyanka Srivastava. Uh, her question is pretty long, so but she. What I understand is that uh, someone has created a clone of her digital devices and even changing multiple devices and SIM card. She's still not able to get rid of that, and they have shared this access publicly, and she reported it to Noida Police. But situation is same, and don't know how to get uh, how they get access to camera and. Uh, so she seems to be victim of cyber stalking. So what should she, she do? 
I think, Professor Sandeep, you are more than competent enough to reply. It's a very technical question. Of course, the device can be cloned, not cloned. Device cannot be cloned. But they, they might have put in some malware. There are lots of applications coming that they can they can ask you to download and your mobile phone is compromised. So this way, I, I think uh, that is the case with them. SIM, nobody can uh, clone. They can get the duplicate SIM out. Uh, by 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 giving your uh, credential uh, uh, related documents to the retailers they can uh, you know otherwise uh, device cloning no malware yes so, so, but that will work like a clone device you know if that is the case then you will have to do a, a deeper forensic there are few experts in delhi i can recommend number one and number two you can refer this case to it itself because they can do some deeper analysis and they can find out whether this device is infected with some sophisticated malware or not. You can do. So that is, it's a very technical. <laughs> so uh, there seems to be uh, another question from uh, Darshil Mehta. Uh, he's asking what are the current technical challenges faced uh, by law enforcement agencies uh, with respect to technology and human resource skills to fight cyber crime. So are you are, are you are, are you going to provide some solution to the law enforcement agency? <laughs> there, there are lots of technical challenges. Uh, let me be very, very frank. You know, hmm. for example, some defect. We don't have handy tools to immediately find out whether it's a defect. Somebody has created by using artificial intelligence or on number one. Number two, we have lots of technical challenge in doing the cloud forensic, you know. So the thermal forensic, you know. Because there are so many limitations uh, in uh, the speed of the image and then how to proceed. Because, for example, suppose you have to do the forensic of AWS or Google Cloud, then how, how is it possible, you know. Then there are legal challenges because the money, the victim is here in Lucknow. The criminal is there in South uh, Africa. Your website, the website through which you were duped, the server is located in Australia. The money is being withdrawn in Mauritius. So you see the complex, legally, how much complex this is just to, to retrieve the law. Then ultimately, uh, ultimately to find out the criminals. And the moment you reach there, I mean, after a long time, if you reach there, to look out uh, for the criminals in Mauritius, then you find that the KYC is completely fake. So there are lots of technical, legal, administrative challenges. And, and then another change, we police, we are basically recruited to deal with hard crimes, you know, like traffic, murder, loot, dakaiti. We are not recruited to look into technical, this emerging uh, yeah, new challenges along with you know new technology developing on daily basis for example now there is threat to i don't understand what is 5g technology because the different protocol is there so now i am i am learning about uh, 6g technology then metaverse how to do the forensic in metaverse so how to deal uh, with the cases when drone drone forensic so new different the, the policeman, the law enforcement agency, they are not supposed to, uh, to understand all the technology involved. So th this is the limitation for the police also, okay, because we have to put much more uh, focus on capacity building and all that. So apart from technical, legal, administrative challenges, we need to have a dedicated you know, technical cadre so that they could, uh, you know, uh, clearly understand. For example, if I don't understand what is keylogger or what is uh, how to do the reverse malware analysis or the you know, uh, uh, you know, remote access tool, then I cannot understand the case in totality. I cannot solve it. So that is the limitation. These are the limitation, few limitation. Okay, so uh, another question from Mr. Mahendra Kumar. What are the challenges if any user is getting a fake call? Um, he knows that it is fake, but is there any system he can uh, 
he can uh, tell that this is fraud. Um, so, uh, for example, one out of 10 is caught in fake calls, but if nine user mark that this is spam or fake, maybe one user can be saved. So can we make any system? So true caller does uh, part of that, right? So uh, so you uh, probably can uh, get that from true caller? Uh, no. For example, there are two different protocols, you know. If I'm getting a call from number, it's a different protocol, you know. And if the same number, if that can be uh, a call by VOIP, you know, mm -hmm. so or internet protocol. So if the call is routing through internet protocol, then number will be visible. The CLI caller line identification will be visible. It will be that of Mr. Trivani Singh, but tracking the call will be very difficult because it's coming from, you know, different international gateway, the technology entirely different. If I'm communicating with uh, first my telecom operator, they say that it's a spoof call, it's a VOIP call. Then they will be looking for some other evidences, then the international gateway, the international carrier, and where the application was developed, and then where the application itself is hosted. This is huge, you know, uh, investigative challenges, you know. So, and, but for you, it's a simple call. For me, you know, so, you know, 15 days or more. Hmm. Now, this is, this is so tough. number to call, for example, suppose somebody is making uh, a WhatsApp call on you. How can you be sure that this number exists? Because they can get OT from, uh, OTP from anywhere. He will be sitting inside, just beside your room and you will be making a, phone call to you, how can you, uh, how can you identify who is that man who is calling from this number? Because you can, you can immediately purchase virtual number. And there are lots of internal, uh, uh, international agency. You can put your demand for any number. They can manage OTP. They can give you the OTP to download WhatsApp. And now you can, you can make a, a WhatsApp call. It's very difficult for law enforcement agency to try. So it's very complex. So that's why true color is not going to help you. Hmm. True color here is not going to help. Okay. Hmm. Because that will show that will show the genuine number. Right. True color is not related to VIP virtual numbers, you know. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, there here is one question. Uh, one student is saying that is a student of uh, UP State Institute of Forensic Science, and he wants to know how to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, into the UP police cyber cell. Uh, um, he wants to serve the police. Mm. So if you want to visit us mm. and uh, our training center, easily you can do. You, you just get connected with us. Mm. We will try to manage, arrange uh, your visit. You know. Mm. So you want to see. Yeah, so so I think I think Professor uh, the uh, um, the this UP Forensic Institute is actually um, uh, the director is ADG Police uh, uh, Doctor Goswami. Yeah, so Goswami is there. He can he can probably arrange some uh, some um, visit to the to to your uh, center, right? Definitely, you can you can. Hmm. Professor Sandeepji, you can uh, contact with him. and I think it's, uh, it's, it's no issue. They can go and see. They can even deliver lecture. Okay, so um, so I see uh, some other questions. Uh, uh, okay, so some of this. Uh, so you can uh, have a complete bias. Of course, why not? Welcome. Mm -hmm. But. So, but but the the invite uh, the request should come from uh, your computer uh, department, you know, computer sure. science department. So uh, through office channel you come. I don't see any problem, you know. We can arrange it. Right. So there is a question from Mr. Taranpreet Singh that uh, what are the preventive measures, best practices to prevent uh, such issues? I I guess he means getting uh, defrauded. Uh, 
And uh, also, have you observed that Android is compromised more frequently than Apple iOS? Yes. Uh, definitely. Uh, whatever li literature is available, hmm. uh, that says that uh, iOS is a bit more secure than the Android, you know. I agree. Uh, as far as what are the preventive countermeasures that you need to uh, deploy to protect yourself online. So uh, better you just look out for a ISO 27001. Uh, it's, a, it's I mean, best practices available worldwide. ISO 27001. There are physical control, administrative control, technical control, and there are a whole lot of around 150 countermeasures, 150. I mean, 140 to 150. So just you go through, it will take hardly 30 minutes. You can go through, you will find how to protect myself, my data, my identity uh, online, number one. Number two, pathic, you know, just thumb roll, don't share your OTP. Don't trust in screen. Don't trust your mail ID that it's a genuine mail ID. Don't trust any call. Be confirmed. And especially when you are communicating something private with someone, don't trust anyone. If you are into financial transaction, don't trust any, anyone. Don't show your debit card, credit card to anyone. Okay. Share limited, you know, the limited pictures on social media. Otherwise, anyone can morph your pictures, you know. So why to share unnecessary photograph, personal photographs on social media? So these are the basic cyber hygiene you can practice. Uh, otherwise, you just Google what to do and what not to do. So you will find a lot of precautions, red flags, alerts, you know. So and it's a, it's a continuous learning process. You know. Basic thumb rule, don't say anything, don't. Don't never because your credit card can, can be cloned, debit card, your finger, you know, your finger can be cloned easily, very easy. Tools, there are some chemicals or some gelatin and, and you can create your thumb imprint, you know. And I have even, I read it in Kanpur and I found more than 1000 cloned fingerprint. And, and those cloned finger were as good as your real finger, you know. <laughs> So, so your biometrics can be cloned. I, mean, I haven't, I have not heard any case in which your, your, you know, iris has been cloned. But, but your biometric is already there and it's very simple. You can get your, uh, you know, finger cloned by paying just 200 rupees. So cheap. So you can, you can get a proxy in class. So that that brings uh, you. You mentioned raiding and getting, um, you know, so many uh, cloned uh, fingers. So uh, um, and we always uh, read about various uh, uh, stories about uh, you cracking uh, many cases, like loan Chinese loan application cases and Nigerian, uh, um, uh, you know, perpetrators and all this stuff. So can you? Tell us about some in, one or two interesting cases where that you uh, uh, solved uh, and and made uh, uh, you know it, it was uh, something that you think people should know about as cautionary tale. Okay, so uh, let me give give you three cases. Modus operandi is same. Number one, there are a lot of you know advertisement related with crypto trading, huge profit you can earn. Okay, you'll be getting lots of messages on your mobile phone, crypto trading. Mm. Then second part-time job, lots of messages you will be getting from some unknown foreign numbers or even the local numbers, WhatsApp messages, part-time job. Okay, and then instant load. Do you really need instant load within seconds, within minutes, you can get the load. So a lady uh, registered a case, FIR in Bareilly. She, uh, she had lost 2.2 lakh rupees. And when I investigated the case, then I, I found that the criminals had taken out 4,200 crore rupees, 4,200 crore rupees from India. And where the money was going? The money was going to Chinese operators. How? Because they, the Chinese operators, they clearly understand the business process. 
of the banking industry, of the fintech industry, of the bulk SMS industry. They are master in understanding those. So these three, and then the crypto, crypto exchange, they know the rules regulation. So in thousands, in single day, six lakh messages had been sent. During my investigation, I found that they had sent in a single day six lakh messages in the name of part-time job from Vipro, from TCS, you know, because the header ID is clearly written Vipro, TCS. The students think that this call is, this message is from, uh, I mean, the big company. The fact is that they had created this, it's a fake, you know, uh, yeah. SMS header. So how the money was going outside from India? They had given thousands of virtual payment headers related with a single nodal account in ICC bank. So thousand victims, they were sending money through VPN, virtual payment headers. All those money were coming into a single account, ICC bank. From there, the money was going out to JPE your local cryptocurrency exchange and from there because they, they you know binance cannot be directly connected with you this is the rbi direction binance cannot you cannot purchase anything directly over the binance because they don't have strict kyc norms but here in india jpe they have to comply with the kyc kyc norms you know because it is taxable cryptocurrency is legal illegal it's not, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's still a gray area. It's not legal tender. One line is not a legal tender. And, and so cryptocurrency, you can understand as a application, as a program, as a digital good, as a digital asset. You can, you can name whatever you like, but this is not a legal tender, you know. So what is happening? The money is coming from virtual payment tenders to ICC bank. From ICC bank to JPE, and from JPE, the money is going to Vinance International Cryptocurrency Exchange Platform. Uh, uh, headquarters is there in USA. And from there, by using Mixer, they are distributing to the private wallet addresses. And you will be surprised to know that I was investigating three cases. Number one, instant loan. Number uh, two, uh, job. And number three, you know, crypto trading. And all were converging on our same platform. Means all these rackets, which was happening through SMS, through different advertisement given on Google, on different social media platform, Facebook, and uh, uh, you know uh, Instagram. And ultimately, all this money were going going to the same gang. You know, forty two hundred crore rupees. So this is a simple uh, melody. So what is the learning? What is learning from this investigation? That don't trust any part-time job message. Don't trust any advertisement which is there on the Google. Don't don't invest into uh, if somebody promises to give you high return, two hundred percent, three hundred percent return in the name of crypto and all that. Don't trust. It's not legal tender. So very dicey. And the criminals they are operating from China. How can you recover the money? You know? So they, they are they are logging into China into the AWS here in Mumbai to hide their IP addresses, you know, and then they are operating their bulk SMS service. They were accessing from there the portal of the bulk SMS service provider from there sitting into China and they are sending lots of SMS, you know. So do you think that this message is from India? Do you think that this money is going to some Indian? Some company, no, the money is all going out. So this is otherwise lots of investigation we have done, but this is the message, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so there is a question uh, from uh, Maria from Project Thirty Nine A, a criminal justice organization. She's saying that sixty uh, five B certificate is often used uh, in the printed form. And therefore, uh, the uh, uh, hash and other things go missing. So her question is, uh, why do you think these faults happen? I'm not so sure what this. Uh, so this is 65B certificate. Is that something 
that comes uh, during the um, cyber uh, um, cyber crime reporting or I, I, I am not understanding the the, the context. <clears throat> So it's a legal, uh, uh, you know, uh, requirement that you have to produce 65B certificate. So what is 65B certificate under Indian Evidence Act? That this computer is secure, that this data is secure, the computer was working properly, there was no tampering, nothing, you know, no malware. This is the kind of certificate that is issued by the data owner, data custodian. So they can, they can certify on a physical paper and they can create an image, so digital image, in, uh, created in a forensically, you know, sound manner by by using, uh, you know, uh, the forensic tool. They can create an image. They can uh, and and uh, of course they can preserve the entire data. They can create hash value. Along with that hash value, you are giving 65B certificates. In case the court needs this to replicate, if this case is contested, contested, and the defense lawyer says that no, we don't believe in this data. It's already tampered and all that. So you will have to prove in the court that this is the hash value. At the time of acquiring this image, the hash value is this. And now you see I'm repli replicating in court of law, uh, the same hash value is coming. Means data is intact. It's no tampering, nothing. So that is the value. Your 65B certificate, whether it's this is in printed form or in a digital way, it doesn't matter. But you have to produce 65B certificate, number one. The real thing is that you have to preserve the data. You have to create a highest value. You have to uh, create a clone copy of that and you keep it somewhere safe. In case this case later on at the trial is that will be contested, then you can produce before the court. This is the legal question. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are uh, almost at the at the end of the hour. So uh, I'll take one last question, and this is from Shobhit Dixit. Uh, he's saying that uh, uh, why don't we do so, why don't the law enforcement do something about this platforms like Google and Facebook, etc., which are allowing this fraud uh, fraudulent advertisements for jobs and and uh, you know phishing through advertisements and things like that. Like how, what is uh, Fake job promotion and all that stuff. Okay, very good question. So I want to tell you that when I investigated the case and I found that forty two hundred crore rupees had uh, gone out to different country, you know, China and Vietnam. So we 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 sit together with uh, uh, official from the law enforcement agency, I mean, I four C MHA and the, the Google representative. And thereafter, they, they had to bring bring about a change. Now, you just go on the Google, you see any ad, on the right hand, you will find three dot. You just click on the three dot and you will find the advertiser name. Earlier, it was not. When I investigated 4200, I raised this issue in the government. We sat together and then they had to bring about these changes. So th there are, there has lot uh, been changes brought into this SMS industry, you know. Bulk SMS. Now nobody can access from China to send this, you know. Mm -hmm. They cannot use the virtual machine on the AWS here in India to hide their IP addresses. You know. So constantly we are upgrading our knowledge. Constantly we are sitting together with law enforcement, different law enforcement agencies, regulators, these service providers, you know, and bringing about some change, some legal changes, some regulatory changes. So constantly we are doing it. Don't worry, we are we are doing it. But you know, it takes some time because technology is so complex. First, we understand. Then we get senior officers to understand. So it takes some time. You know, some regulator to understand our perspective. We need we need to understand their technical reach and limitations. And we always try to you know resolve this you know issues. So now you just go on Google, click three dot, you will find the advertiser, advertiser name. If he is posting it from Hong Kong, it will be clearly visible there. This aid is part-time job, aid is from Hong Kong. You can do it, you can see it right now. Okay, any more question? 
Yeah, so we are at the top of the hour, so I, I won't take more of your time because uh, you, you must be also uh, busy and, uh, you know, uh, we would like to have you back again sometime soon, but uh, uh, today I'm going to, uh, um, you know, thank you and, uh, um, you know, it was a very engaging session and, and very um, uh, you know, interesting for everybody who uh, are, I mean, all of us are actually worried about uh, falling victim to some kind of cyber fraud uh, on a daily basis. And, and I, I know in last few days, two of my colleagues have uh, had uh, cases that, uh, um, that, are, uh, that I had contacted you about. And so uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Chibani Singh. It was a great pleasure uh, having you. And uh, I will now uh, give it back to Chandan and uh, uh, to uh, conclude. So oh, I have to I have to allow Chandan to unmute. Yes. So that has created a different department for cyber crime in your IT campus. Now cyber security division is no longer around. So create a different vertical only to deal into fintech crime and financial crime and cyber crime, technology crime. You just create a different vertical. There should be assistant professor, associate, and dean, and professor, and you know, head of department. So it's only for cyber crime. Only then we can. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you so you. much, sir. Throughout our discussion, we have touched upon the various facets of cyber fraud, from phishing scams to identity thefts, and ever increasing sophistication of uh, cyber criminals. We have also delved into the ways individuals, businesses, and even governments can protect themselves against these threats. Remember, learning to survive in a world of cyber fraud is an ongoing journey. The landscape is constantly changing, and so too must our approach to cybersecurity. By staying informed, adopting best practices, and working together, we can navigate this digital world more safely and protect ourselves and our communities from cyber threats. A special thank you to our exceptional moderator, Professor Sandeep Shukla, sir, and our guest speaker, Professor Triveni Singh, sir. Thank you for joining us in this important discussion. Together, we can build a more secure and uh, more secure and digital world for ourselves and future generations. Stay safe, stay vigilant, and keep learning. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Much, Professor Singh, and uh, we hope to get you again uh, on our program. Sure. Sure. For family members.